Good afternoon, and welcome back to our cooking show at Franklin Memorial Library. Um, we are going to try some things with uh, slow cookers today. The first thing is uh, something that's called a King Ranch Chicken. Uh, and this is something that uh, the recipe when I read it, uh, went back to a recipe that I did. I was in a club when I was in high school, um, 150 years ago. <laughs> back then you had uh, clubs like you do some of the clubs you still have, you know, the FFA and you had the 4-H. Um, we also, I was uh, raised out west, so we uh, had Grangers. We also had a club that I don't think they have anymore called Future Homemakers. And uh, when I was elected, I was from Alaska and I was the first person that was ever elected as a national officer for the, from the state of Alaska. And so a little local back then, we only had just local television stations. Uh, there was, nothing like we have now, but uh, we, they invited me to talk about being an officer for Future Homemakers, and they asked me if I could cook, and I'm going, um, yeah, Future Homemakers, we could cook and we could sew. So I made a recipe on that little television show, and it is very, very similar to this one, except that we didn't have the slow cooker, we did it in the oven. So what we're going to do is, we start off uh, making the sauce that we're going to put in it and in the sauce we're going to cut up an onion and this recipe um we have got on recipe cards and will be available um if you go on to the franklin memorial uh, facebook site we are also going to do um a dessert or candy with a slow cooker after we get done with this just chop up your onion and you can go this is a fairly uh versatile type of recipe you can do as much you can do as much as you can do half an onion you can do a whole onion if you like um we were actually surprised at how much this this will actually fill up one of these large slow cookers this is a pretty large recipe so we are putting in that onion also put the sauce we draining and this is why we're doing this in our kitchen here um, we are also draining up some of the juice we're putting in a can of diced uh tomatoes with chilies now if you don't like the chilies if you want something a little bit milder uh one of uh the other ladies here doesn't care for hot spicy foods so um she's going to just use the recipe and use it with, with just plain diced tomatoes. Okay, a can of mushroom soup. And a can of cream of chicken soup. Then put that in the trash, put in a can of chicken broth. This is going to be to taste as well. Depends on whether you like garlic or not. A little bit of garlic. Probably about anywhere from a quarter to a half a teaspoon of chopped garlic. A little bit bigger spoon here. And that's going to be the sauce that we put on the chicken. You could add, if you like things really spicy, you could go ahead and get um, a can of the um, jalapeno peppers and put that in it. And it's just kind of to taste, you can try it um, the first time. And if you need it a little bit more spicy, or you can always put the jalapeno, sprinkle the jalapenos over it as you get done. Okay, 
And now we're actually ready to layer. What we've done is we've taken um, three large chicken breasts and cut them up into uh, chunks. And we have a 14 ounce bag of tortilla chips. Um, now you can spray the inside of your slow cooker um, with spray if you want. Put in a generous layer of your tortilla chips in the bottle. And this is all really cooked down, so don't worry about it being kind of mounted up toward the top. Okay. And then, in a layer of your chicken. You're going to put in two layers of everything. So, say this is about half of the chicken we're going to layer in. And this was why it was important um, for us to do our taping here in the kitchen. Because when you're work working with raw chicken, please make sure that you wash yourself in water. Okay. And then we're going to put in half of our sauce. Then we have two cups of shredded cheese. And this is the extra sharp. You can use mild if you like that better. I put that in. And then we're going to do just another second layer. We'll put another layer of chips in. This is probably going to be anywhere from six to eight. Okay, and then we're going to do another layer of the chicken. And I have got a crock pot with this. I came in earlier this morning and started a whole pot of this. So you can see what it's going to look like when it's all done. Oh. And I was surprised that this didn't have, this recipe did not call for salt and pepper, but I guess because of the jalapeno peppers in it, and also because of the tortilla chips, um, and you'd have to salt in that, um, you can salt and pepper to taste later. Um, when I made this when I was in high school, um, tortilla chips were not all that popular. The Fritos corn chips were, but we actually would have to put uh, tortillas, corn tortillas, on the stove and get them soft and then tear them up or cut them up before we put them in the casserole. Okay, and that's all there is to that casserole. Put the lid on and put it on low for about four to four and a half hours. Now, when it's done, So yummy. Here at the library this evening. Here it is. Look at there. 
and you can always put another little if you've got some of the tortilla chips left over you can crumble up some that are nice and crispy and put that on top and have a green salad and there you are King Ranch is King Ranch is actually a place in Texas um, one of the largest cattle ranches in the state of Texas owned by now Next, we're going to swing us around very slowly over here to the next table. And in this crock pot, we have had, I'm melting the chocolate. Oh, my God. Um, the ingredients for this, you can use peanuts or um, you can use uh, pecans. You use a package of milk chocolate chips. You use a package of semi-sweet chocolate chips and a package of the uh, candy coating. They call it um, vanilla bark or chocolate bark, white bark candy. Drop that up. Put your pecans or your peanuts in the bottom of your slow cooker and then put your chocolate chips and your uh, bark on the top and put it on low because it will scorch, chocolate will scorch very easily. Um, and it seems to take forever. We've had actually had this on the slow cooker since 11 o'clock this morning, and it is kind of sort of melted, but the pecans actually get very, very hot. So when you do spoon it out, it seems like it isn't really candy consistency and it's not uh, the way it should be. It's not going to uh, solidify. It looks, it looks like it's all going to stick together. It will eventually harden. Um, it's just going to take a little bit. So what you do is put out some parchment paper. Um, don't use wax paper. The wax paper, because of the heat of the nuts, uh, the wax paper will melt into your candy. After all of this, waiting for all this chocolate to melt, that would be disastrous. Okay, so what you do is you'll take your parchment paper and be very, very careful because this is melted chocolate and the pecans are hot and the chocolate is hot. So just take your chocolate and just in little, little lumps, put out. Just about a tablespoon or so. Just watching, make sure you've got some, some nuts in it and some chocolate. Of course, it's going to be hot, so be very careful. And it's going to take, um, it's taken five hours for it to melt. And then it's probably going to take another two hours at least for it to cool because the nuts um, have absorbed that heat. And it just takes the pecans a lot longer than um, a lot of the recipes, it'll, the peanuts don't take as long to, for them to cool. But uh, it's something that uh, is a favorite. Um, the first year I made it, um, I had made it to give to uh, the neighbors as a little treat. And uh, my husband wanted to know where his was. So uh, last year, I made sure I made enough that I could give to neighbors and I also had enough that my husband had chocolate candy. So um, I hope that you have fun with this. We're going to try to come up. As you can see, we don't have a stove here in the library. So uh, we will see what we can come up for. We can show for uh, next month. It'll be closer to Thanksgiving. So uh, we'll see what we can do. And now we're going to see if maybe we can get some type of burn system and uh, do something as a Thanksgiving treat for you. So uh, think about us, uh, enjoy cooking with us, and uh, look at our cookbooks. That's part of the thing is uh, being able to use our cookbooks here at the library to find something fun to do. And it's uh, been a joy to do this for you. So you have a good week and enjoy your candy and your casserole. Bye-bye.